Hello, everyone. My name is Lyubov. I am a mathematician by training. But now I would like to tell you um, the material for the lecture about population coding. It's a material which we have been discussing with master level students uh, from the university. It's related to two topics, essentially to ecology, biology, and to mathematics. It's also um, the lecture which we made for a class in Cre in France. So there are um, two reasons, two main reasons why population ecology, why population dynamics. One of the first ones is because the population dynamics, it's directly related to understanding the status of our society about the ecosystem we live in. That's why it's a topic which is really important in general to understand. Uh, and secondly, uh, my personal uh, reason to make a lecture about it is because it's a topic which is related to mathematical objects, which I really like uh, to study. It's a network. And this object you see here in the screen, and it's a, something which is a, actually an object which can be described using two simple mathematical objects, it's such as nodes and links between them. And population uh, dynamics is something which can be also modeled and described using these complex uh, tools. We will speak about it in a second. But uh, here I just simply uh, make you an uh, introduction about my own research topics, which I'm working on currently. And the, probably the closest topic I got into this was actually related to epidemic spreading, which we were working with my colleagues. Um, but um, if you would like to learn more about it, you can go to this website. But essentially the main um, outline of the lecture today uh, will be three main uh, topics. Birth and death processes. It's something which is related to population dynamics description in general. Then we will briefly talk about understanding of epidemic spreading uh, in populations and also populations modeled by networks. And the third additional part will be network theory in respect to the population dynamics. How network uh, tools can be helpful for understanding the population dynamics. But we'll start with the first very simple model, which is a model for the first uh, part of the lecture, which is birth and death processes. Birth and death processes have been modeled for centuries, and mathematicians have been trying to uh, understand the evolution of populations such as populations which have no bound. So populations which do not have any bounds of growth, they are known to be modeled by, for example, this type of equation where you have the speed of the population growth, population of a size n, and the speed uh, is a rate r, which uh, can lead to the solution, can, which leads to the exponential, uh, right? The, um, solution of this equation, of this differential equation. And this is something which is known as unbounded increase model. But you all understand that this model is not so realistic because usually in reality, uh, people always deal with some capacity of the systems, such as limitation of the growth due to limited resources or due to some ex other external problems. That's why one of the first attempts of that description was, uh, and one of the most known, is logistic growth model, where you have this known uh, kind of sinusoidal curve, which is used in many other applications in neural networks and other uh, topics, which you can find there, which is a growth, which is limited by the capacity of the system K. So in the first term, before to speak about the mathematics of how to model it, let's um, dive into the mechanisms of the model. So the mechanism is very simple. The mechanism is um, related to the fact that you have the curve, 
which first really resembles exponential growth. So the system of the organisms, the population, which we model is uh, exhibiting the, the growth, right? And uh, first the system doesn't see the limitations or the capacity of the system. So in this respect, first, uh, the speed is essentially uh, following the same unbounded increase model speed. But then it starts to be um, feeling the limitation of the resources, for example, in this case, K. So the four um, uh, M, right, is used, um, is, or the number of individuals at time point uh, T, or here we call it X, uh, the horizontal axis, in our case, it's something which we are able to model as um, the number of um, uh, as their timestamp of our model. Uh, and the number of individuals, so in this case F, will be described in this case by the um, uh, function, which is limited by uh, L, the maximum number of individuals in the system. So essentially, two parameters of logistic growth model is this uh, L parameter and parameter K. Here we don't talk about X0, which is the first time stamp of the, of the system. Uh, these are two parameters which are changing the curve of the logistic growth um, and changing it in a respect to the horizontal axis. So they can um, be uh, changing the curve from being very, um, very uh, uh, not uh, not strained, and then you are able to change it in horizontal horizontally by changing the rate or the speed of the spreading of of of, of the growth. Before we continue, we I need to make a disclaimer that this is only physicist kind of way right of seeing the systems of course the systems which are more complex are systems which cannot be represented by a simple object such as for example systems when we do not take into account the interactions inside the population here we do not right we assume some kind of homogeneity average property of growth and average properties of capacity for all all individuals in the population, which is not necessarily the case in all the systems. Uh, another level of uh, population dynamics model is models where you have several populations. One of the most known of such models is lot Cavalter model. In the case of lot Cavalter model, uh, one has two populations. So two populations such as the population uh, of uh, lepus, for example, and lynx. So there are two uh, species uh, who are interacting in one territory. So they also are uh, species which uh, dynamics of which we would like to model. And the main um, insight here, takeaway message from this slide is that one has the population of, for example, the first species which is described by first one uh, logistic growth uh, uh, kind of type of model minus extracted a nonlinear term of interactions between these two populations, so which is donated by, denoted by beta. So this is alpha, which is reproduction rate of one species. And this is delta, which is uh, the interaction level of one into another right so this these nonlinear terms will lead to a very um, uh, sim not simple uh, dynamics which i invite you to check on this website from the brockman's group in germany where they actually modeled a spatial also distribution of such model spatial distribution and evolution in time of such model. So here, for example, on the right side, you see the table of evolution of uh, how people um, can uh, actually observe this um, similar 
behavior of the models uh, in the real systems, right? The evolution of number of links and number of levels. Uh, and if you will model the number of each species uh, by these equations, you will also see this kind of type of waves, right? Which are caused by the nonlinear systems. Mm. I would like to tell you also a bit more about the second topic of our uh, lecture on population dynamics, which is epidemic spreading. There are two reasons for that. One of um, these reasons is because it's directly related to population dynamics, right? It's uh, population dynamics in respect to number of species which are susceptible or number of species which are infected. And this is one of the first ways of uh, working uh, with some simple systems, which uh, can explain us also the situation which is now happening uh, in the world with the outbreak of viruses, for example, right? So there are some materials which we invite you here to check if you would like to learn more about this, including articles from people working on this from a computational epidemiologists. So what are these uh, models? What are these uh, epidemic spreading models, such as SIR models, for example? Um, these are models which are having essentially two parameters. Uh, essentially, uh, they can have as many parameters as you want, but the simplest ones are the following. So we have a number of susceptible individuals, right, individuals who can get sick. It's a population um, which is essentially the first uh, population which we have in our society without any infectious uh, disease, for example. Then we have also a number of people who got infected already and also people who can be recovered. And there is also the two parameters, beta and gamma, which are parameters of probability of getting sick or probability of getting recovered from um, the infectious state to recovered and probability to get from susceptible to infected. Varying these parameters can lead to this very complex behavior of curves such as the ones which you see here. Uh, so in green, you see number of infected people number of infected people in time. So the notebook here, which I put here, actually produces these curves and it produces them for one type of the parameter of beta and gamma for number of uh, also susceptible people in the beginning, which is 500, right? Uh, which is uh, fast uh, uh, decreasing and then it converges to the number of uh, recovered people. So here we do not include uh, cases of death in the population. Uh, what is uh, What are the take-home messages from here? One first take-home message is that if we look into the curve of uh, green curve of number of infected people in time, we will have uh, the number of infected people which reads, reaches so-called epidemics uh, uh, maximum. And this um, epidemics maximum, it's some very uh, specific property of the system, um, which also is can be explained by the SIR um, type of models, um, which uh, also can be described as the differential equations, which I invite you here to check. Um, second uh, take home message from here is that this epidemics um, maximum, so the the maximum of the number of people who are getting infected is some something which one can influence by changing parameter beta of getting the probability of getting sick from number of in, uh, susceptible people to infected essentially parameter beta one can approximate for each case of the diseases but it's very hard to get it uh, because it's also something which on average can be dependent on the parameters of the population, for example, right? So meaning that one from one disease from another to another, such as for example, measles, it's this epidemics uh, spreading model 
models is quite well, but if we talk about other ones, uh, other diseases, uh, it may not be the case that it's the best model for that. Uh, so here, I really invite you to, uh, to check this uh, website for um, playing with these uh, models such as uh, the epidemics uh, spreading models. So for example, um, here, if you run the simulations, you will see um, some of the uh, population dynamics uh, spreading, right, where you have infected uh, uh, nodes which are in black and white nodes uh, which are susceptible and uh, gray ones which are recovered. And um, interesting parameter here is that in fact if one also allows the probability that some recovered nodes can again become uh, susceptible, right, which is the case with uh, various diseases, also, for example, in some uh, cases, disease can, may come back, right? It means that the epidemics will never be really uh, extinct, right? So it will actually recover again and again. Well, in the case of SIR, as we saw in the uh, curve, which I showed you, there was epidemic peak, and then it was slowly going down and the number of recovered people was actually equal to the number of infected people in the beginning. Um, so the third take home message would be that if you have number of recovered people uh, which cannot be um, getting susceptible again, uh, you will not um, be able to have this kind of second waves of outbreaks and third waves of outbreaks. This SIR model is the simplest one which you can imagine in this case. Um, with uh, this simple introduction to the epidemic spreading, I would like to make a disclaimer that um, these are materials which are valid only for the simplest possible models of spreading, right? We did not take into account interactions between uh, any species here, right? So we did not take into uh, account interactions between two different individuals which may have different immunity, um, different parameter of getting sick, right? Different parameter beta for, from one individual to another. So the uh, question here would be how that would actually allow better to model the systems which are more human-like, right? Um, in this uh, article review on epidemic spreading in networks, uh, Alex Pospignani and colleagues uh, of him um, described more details, different possible solutions which people were finding for describing uh, the systems which are more uh, complex and just average population, as you see here on the right hand side. Um, and the main uh, take home message of modeling SIR models on networks would be that, in fact, uh, describing uh, spreading and taking into account spreading from one node to another uh, through the link, through, through the connection. For example, if I know you, right, and we met yesterday for lunch, um, the probability that I could transfer uh, you um, um, the virus, uh, it's, it will be much higher than uh, the probability for me to transfer the virus uh, to someone whom I just briefly met uh, in Metro and interacted. I didn't interact so much. Um, coming back to the population uh, dynamics. Um, in general, population dynamics is really a big field and uh, I invite you to, to check uh, the website of Santa Fe Institute, uh, various uh, professors working on this topic such as Richard Ho um, Sole um, uh, and uh, Stephanie Crabtree and uh, many various other researchers who are working on population dynamics. Um, epidemic spreading is very, very small, right? Uh, 
um, some part of it. It's a big field, but it's something which um, is not uh, uh, just one uh, possible applications of that. Uh, another topic which we do not talk here, but if you're interested, I invite you to uh, discover it uh, here. Uh, it's, it's a topic of fragility of systems. So here on the right, you see the network of a species. It's a species network. It's not a network of different organisms, but it's a species network. And a simple research question which one can ask here is whether you can um, remove some species from a network of species connected to each other and still um, have different um, types of uh, other systems or species which are still being to survive in the system. So the question is how many links you can remove from the system so that the system is still uh, not destroyed. For example, if you remove all those uh, links which are getting resources, right, producing, uh, produced by plants, flowers, um, this other network will collapse very soon, right? And this is uh, uh, a very uh, important question uh, in, in light of the climate change problems. So it's something which one can also uh, study in, 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 in respect to global influence, external influence of the, on the system. And again, the network representation of species connect uh, to each other here, meaning that one link is, um, uh, implies that one species is eating another one, right? It depends on the resources. It's a, a, it's a big research question. Um, here is a paper which I will invite you to, to read um, on this topic if you're interested and make your own simulations. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask me. And uh, if you want to know more about uh, this topic, um, don't hesitate to reach uh, me. Thank you.